All right, so this video is gonna kind of serve multiple purposes, but um, first and foremost, I wanna reach out to every single subscriber to my channel right now and personally say thank you so much for bumping me over a thousand subscribers. I didn't even realize when I dropped that Galaxy IPA video last week, I didn't even realize how close I actually was to a thousand subscribers uh, until I got that email in my inbox and said I had just crossed that threshold, uh, which is ridiculous. So. I started this YouTube channel about two years ago, and it was pretty much just a passion project slash let's do something, put it on YouTube and see where it goes kind of project. Uh, and I was not like I was not personally in a great place at that period of time. Uh, but now two years later, this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I never expected that I would actually get into creating content as much as I have lately. And I never honestly expected that I would even get to this point, that people would actually enjoy watching what I was putting out there. So this has been a massive uh, blessing, really. And I uh, have every single one of you guys who are subscribed to thank for this. Every single one of you has been a motivator for me to keep doing what I'm doing. This is a lot of fun. I have no intentions of stopping anytime soon, slowing things down at all. Uh, I'm going to keep brewing, I'm going to keep filming, and letting you guys know what happens. So here's to the next several years of this YouTube channel going strong, and here is to you, my first thousand subscribers. Never, ever thought I'd be saying those words. Uh, so, cheers to you. So the rest of this video is going to focus on uh, a question that I get from time to time, and uh, that is, how do I manage to do all this stuff in an apartment? I have branded myself as the apartment brewer, um, and I don't really know what would happen to my channel and what I would do with it if I were to ever actually be able to afford a house, um, but I live in New England, so the likelihood of that is <laughs> But basically, I had uh, someone ask, I had a longtime viewer of the channel uh, ask me a little while ago if I could do a video on uh, how I store everything and kind of what my process has been for um, fermentation within the apartment. So I figured I'd take that and answer those questions. But uh, if you'll forgive a handheld video for a little while here and probably some really bad lighting, um, it's gonna, I'm just gonna walk you through the apartment and I'm gonna talk to you about some equipment. So when I started this channel two years ago, uh, I was in a rather small one bedroom apartment in uh, Metro Boston inside of the 95 belt. Um, and that was fine, but uh, it is a very expensive place to live. Um, I'm very, very lucky to have a good job that pays me well enough that I can afford to live on my own uh, without roommates because I can't imagine how I would be brewing and running a YouTube channel at the same time if I had roommates. They would probably kill me. But despite all that, still in that place, I wasn't really able to, uh, to live um, more than paycheck to paycheck. So I set my sights north and moved to uh, southern New Hampshire. So in southern New Hampshire, the cost of living is actually much lower than Metro Boston. And so I was able to find a, uh, an apartment that is significantly cheaper than my last place and actually has more uh, square footage, believe it or not. So it was a win-win situation and I took it. This is where the majority of my uh, videos have been shot uh, in my new New Hampshire apartment here. Um, so I'm going to give you a kind of a, a sweeping tour of it. You've seen uh, various angles of it during different parts of the video, so I just figured I might as well give it to you all in one shot so you can get an idea of where things actually are. So right now we're in my living room, um, and you'll see I still have my Christmas decorations up, and uh, yeah, I'm one of those people, but uh, they're going down pretty soon, don't worry too much. I have my little uh, budget lighting kit here and my, uh, <laughs> my tripod here. Now you're probably gonna recognize this angle, uh, and I have this little nook and cranny here, which doesn't really serve much of a purpose. And uh, it turns out the kegerator fits perfectly into that. So that's where I've put that. And I really can't think of any other place that I would stick it. Moving into the kitchen here, sorry for the mess. I'm kind of in the middle of a bunch of stuff and I haven't cleaned, but uh, my table and uh, dining area is right in my kitchen. So this is where I typically will film all of the uh, review, kind of final tasting videos. And then if we move to the left, this is where my kitchen is. So it's kind of a smaller space still, but uh, I make do with it. And at the moment I'm just cleaning out my heat stick in preparation for actually brewing a Hefeweizen tomorrow. 
which should be on the channel in a while. Uh, <laughs> but this right here is kind of where I think I'm going to focus most of my attention for this video. This collapsible set of shelves here uh, is where I store all of my brewing equipment. And basically, that's the way I'm able to actually maintain all the space that I have. Now, right in front of me here is a uh, little kitchen island that I use to store most of my recipe books, some bottle cases, um, I do most of my food prep here when I'm cooking, and uh, it stores some silverware as well. However, it's on wheels, so I can take this and I can move it out of the way during shots, so that way I'm able to get good angles uh, when I'm filming for brew days. So now I'm gonna give you kind of a uh, brief history of my brewing experience. I started brewing in 2016, uh, once I gotten out of college, I figured I'd try it and see what would happen. So I bought a little one gallon uh, starter kit from Northern Brewer and uh, it started the whole thing off. So it was an extract kit and I used this little lobster pot right here to uh, start brewing with extract. And I did a couple batches with extract and I decided that I wanted to try something different. Uh, so I explored the options of doing all grain and I figured I didn't have the space nor time nor commitment uh, to doing classic all grain. So I decided I'd look into the brew in a bag style and well, it stuck with me. So I did a lot of one gallon brew in a bag batches for a while until I really got the hang of it. Uh, and I really liked that and I continued to use this little tiny pot here. <laughs> uh, but this has now kind of become a utility pot for me. I uh, just do a lot of liquid collection in this and uh, sometimes hold sanitizer in it. Um, but I did a several batches with brew in a bag and then I decided that I liked having more than one gallon of beer on hand. So I decided to upgrade to a modest three gallon batch. So that is when I decided to buy this pot right here, which is the uh, brewer's best, it's just the stainless steel eight gallon pot. And that was the perfect size for me to do three gallon brew in a bag batches. I was typically running with three gallon fermenters like this one. Um, and I made a lot of different three gallon batches for most of 2017 and then 2018. So that's when I started the YouTube channel. Uh, and I was still doing three gallon brew in a bag batches. And then I had this little immersion chiller here that I actually still have um, that I used to chill down the batches and that worked pretty well. So then after doing three gallon batches for about a year, um, I decided that I would move up here to New Hampshire. And this apartment has one massive downside and that is the fact that this stove right here, um, I believe is from about 1980, 1990, something like that. It is an electric stove, but it is, very old. And it had trouble bringing enough water to boil even for a three gallon batch of beer. So I had to find a way to supplement that boil. So that's where the heat stick came in. So this is from brewhardware.com and it is a 1650 watt ultra low wattage density heat stick, which runs on a 120 volt circuit, uh, which is your typical circuit for uh, United States. Now this, combined with the output of the stovetop burner, was able to bring uh, my water up to a very vigorous boil. Uh, and then, at that point, I was like, huh, what if I decided to get a little bit more volume? So then I purchased a much larger brew pot, which is this guy, the Megapot 1.2. This is a uh, 11 gallon capacity brew pot. Um, but it is a very thick wall construction has a very heavy, robust, solid steel three layered bottom. So this, uh, had, this basically allowed me to get very good heat, uh, dissipation throughout the entire mash and boil because I was still doing brew in a bag. Um, and this allowed me to have enough volume in the mash tun slash boil kettle to get me a five gallon brew in a bag batch. Okay, so at that point I started doing five gallon batches and I think that's really where my uh, kind of intensity in the hobby really picked up. Um, I had a lot of different uh, experimentation that I did during that period of time and I started putting out a lot more YouTube videos during that time. I did that for about seven or eight months um, and then I actually I had the crazy idea to uh, start kegging my beer because uh, I figured I would work with the space. Now typically I was hiding uh, cases of bottles in random places in my house. So I had 
um, I think it had about six cases of bottles at any given point in time, and they were majorly either hanging out here in the kitchen somewhere, uh, or they were in my linen closet, <laughs> which was interesting. Um, but I was kind of getting sick and tired of bottling day, and I was getting sick and tired of uh, washing them out and continuously maintaining the bottles. So I decided to look into kegging. I built the kegerator uh, over the course of a couple days and um, slowly added kegs to it. And that absolutely revolutionized the brewing process for me uh, because then I was able to brew faster. I was able to save a lot of time and also kind of increase a little bit of quality control there. Uh, but it did have a downside of not being able to easily give the beer away as much as I had before. Um, but now that I've figured out how to work with growlers, that's, uh, that's been a little bit easier. Um, well then, shortly after moving to uh, kegs, I decided to get the idea of how could I improve my mashing process. So I was consistently losing 3 to 5 degrees on my mash, um, which was fine. The beer was coming out great. It wasn't a problem. Um, but I wanted to try more advanced mashing techniques. I just wanted to try them. Um, I am an engineer by trade, so I have a little bit of that kind of experimental scientific nature that wants to do stuff that the hard way just to figure out how it works. Um, and that's kind of what drove a lot of the building of the recirculation system. So I did a lot of research and I have a video on how I constructed this whole system. So I'm not gonna explain it in detail right now, uh, but I saved up for a while and then I got all the parts to uh, build this recirculation uh, electric system. Um, and for the most part, I actually repurposed a lot of the old equipment. The eight gallon kettle was repurposed, the heat stick was kind of given a dual purpose, and um, you know, in the most part, it still was brewed in a bag, just with a constant recirculation going through it. That is something that I think has become a little controversial because it seems like it's a very advanced thing. It's really just a constant Vorloff but you can really achieve similar results with a single infusion mash by wrapping your coats and stuff around just like I did for many years. It's totally acceptable. I just wanted to push that boundary. I wanted to experiment and for the most part, it's just an exploration thing for me. I personally think it's given my brews a little bit extra dimension. I don't think it makes superior beer to anybody who's working with an igloo cooler or doing a standard, um, you know, brew in a bag thing like I was doing just a few months ago. It doesn't change that for me. I think what it changes for me is the involvement in the beer, the personal aspect of just building something that's gonna make beer more interesting for me. It's gonna make brewing more interesting for me. Um, and I think that's kind of where that came from. And at the end of the day, I'm happy with what I did with the system, and it has saved me a fair amount of time. Um, and But it is very, very far from the initial brew in a bag system that I started out with this channel with. Um, but I, I want to just stress that you can make the exact same recipes that I make with the brew in a bag system with a single infusion mash. Even if it's something advanced like a step mash, you can still replicate that with a single infusion mash and you'll be fine. It's just for me, it's an added detail and you gotta understand from a brain of, a, of an engineer, that is, an, that is a thing that matters to me. All right, so the last part of this video is just gonna go in and answer that fan question about how do I maximize the space that is available to me and what are some techniques that are for other people who might be living in confined spaces and wanna brew like this. So my biggest and probably my most important advice in this case is to find as many purposes as you can for every piece of equipment that you have. So if you dig into my brewing process, you'll see that a lot of the pieces of equipment I have have at least two purposes. First of all, I still use my boil kettle as my mash tun. Even though I'm recirculating, I still have a two vessel system. So at one point, that vessel is a mash tun and then I take the bag full of grain out of it when I'm done and I boil. That part has not changed from brewing a bag. Secondly, my kegerator that I built is also a lager fermentation chamber. So I can do lagers in an apartment with a freezer that is not much larger than your than a small kitchen table. Thirdly, I have this heat stick, which I use not just for the boil, but also for the mash. I use it to control the mash temperatures based on the controller that I have. And that has allowed me to independently change whatever temperature I want within the mash itself. So I can do multi-temperature mashes that way. With the building of the recirculating system, I have a ton of this silicon uh, tubing here. Um, and 
one of the most important things I've found is that I can actually take one of these and put a chiller garden hose attachment on it. So I can hook this up to my sink. So I effectively am able to fill my uh, kettle really quickly and I can extend the reach of my standard sink faucet to my stove, to back here, to down here, and I can run, wash it, I can wash much more efficiently like this. I can pump water into things efficiently uh, and it just really extends the reach that I have within my kitchen. And all it took was just one little garden hose adapter to, to the faucet threading and some tubing. And you can make that as long as you want um, to get wherever you need to go. And then I, when I'm done with it, I just unscrew it from my faucet and put the standard tap water filter back on and we're back in business. That has taken the place of your restaurant style sink that some people think they need for brewing. You don't need stuff like that. You really don't. There's enough water pressure in the standard uh, domestic system to wash all your stuff effectively. And then last but most certainly not least is how do I ferment? How do I find space for that? Well, I have two fermenters uh, that both are able to fit five gallon batches. One of them is the bucket and the other one is like a plastic carboy. So it depends on what kind of beer I'm doing. If I'm doing a lager or like a, a hybrid yeast that yeah, ferments at like 50 or lower, I'm gonna put it in the keg grater. In that case, I'm gonna pull a keg out and I'm gonna fit one of those fermenters in there. And in that case, I'm able to control the fermentation very precisely. However, since I like drinking the beer that's in my kegerator, I'm not gonna use that for an ale because uh, I don't like warm beer, who does? So uh, for ale fermentations, I'm kind of doing a flip side of what traditional uh, brewers would do before fermentation temperature control, and that is to brew with the season. So I don't have really super effective air conditioning here, but in the summer, I'll typically do uh, more Belgian style ales, perhaps use the Kvike yeast or any other kind of yeast that can tolerate 70 degrees and up without producing any sort of bad flavors. Or I'll also do lagers in that case. In the winter, my ambient temperature in here can come down to about 65 to 68 degrees, which is perfect for ales. So I'll do a lot of ales in the winter. Um, I'll do you know, Hefeweizens in the winter, which like to ferment around 62 to 65. I'll do your typical English ales and I'll do uh, darker stouts types of things in the winters. So it's honestly at the mercy of the temperature in my apartment, but I do have some control over that with a thermostat. And I'm not one of those people that cranks up the heat in the apartment. I typically keep it around 65 to 68. So there you have it. Um, it's That's basically how I do things. And that's kind of the breakdown of my history and what I'm working with right now. Um, if you have questions, and definitely if you have suggestions on process improvement or anything like that, they're very welcome. Uh, I'm already anticipating that one of those questions might be, why don't I have a grain father? Why don't I have a robo brew? any of those all-in-one systems? Well, the answer to that is, honestly, there's plenty of people on YouTube that already do. And I'd rather do something different, and I'd rather try to just do it myself. Like I said, I'm an engineer. I try to think analytically, and I try to build stuff myself before I try to purchase an all-in-one thing. Um, and yes, I probably spent about the exact same amount of money as it would have cost me to get one of those systems, but I feel more connected to the beer that I brew because I built my own equipment. And I think that's something that's actually well within reach of most people that watch this channel. Uh, it, it's not as hard as it seems. You just need a little bit of tools and uh, the motivation for it. So once again, thank you so much for this crazy thing where I got a thousand subscribers on a YouTube channel that was basically just kind of like a passion project. So that means so much to me personally. Um, so thank you all once again. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit deviation from the norm. Um, but if you want more videos about my process, my techniques, my equipment, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be more than happy to oblige. I've already got another one planned for how to work with the, uh, the brewing notebook that I use. I've got a couple questions on that. Um, and it is worth actually breaking down and explaining. I'm going to try and push out some more grain to glass videos in the next couple weeks. I have the alt beer that I'm drinking right now, uh, which is almost ready. So that'll be coming out soon. And like I said, tomorrow I'm going to be brewing a Hefeweizen, so that's another one that'll make it to the channel in a couple weeks. If you don't want to wait a couple weeks for an update, there's always my Instagram, which is at the apartment brewer on Instagram. Um, and there I'll tend to post a little more frequently than I do here on YouTube, so typically it's every few days uh, on Instagram, every few weeks here on YouTube. 
But thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you enjoy this type of thing, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel become a little more relevant to YouTube. And uh, if you like watching this consistently, I typically do a lot more uh, brewing videos where I'm actually making beer, going all the way through the process, and then drinking the beer at the end of the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any videos from me. The last but not least, um, I kind of went through my equipment in a little more detail in this video, but if you're interested in purchasing any of that for yourself, I have compiled a complete list in the description box below of all of my equipment and where you can get it for yourself uh, from Amazon. Just, but just know that those are affiliate links. If you do purchase something by clicking on one of those links, I do earn a very small commission, but it's not at any additional cost to you. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and continue finishing up this beer and cleaning up my kitchen in preparation for brewing tomorrow. So stay tuned for the alt beer video coming out pretty soon. So I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers and thanks for watching.